Hello everyone and welcome to the second chapter of Asia in the Limelight, taking place as part of From Home Export Days, a series of online events organized by Le Bureau Export, the French Music Export Office. Together with my colleagues, we've created From Home Export Days to keep connecting international professionals and get us all ready for new horizons. For this new chapter, we are pleased to host a Jazz Focus on Asia, which will start in a moment with three presentations about jazz markets in China, Japan and South Korea. And please stay with us tomorrow for a panel discussion called How to e-connect with Asia and until Saturday to listen to the showcases of Paul Jarret, Anne Paseo and Vincent Perani. They will be presented during the Korean Jazz Festival Jara Zoom and broadcast on their YouTube channel and on What de France, the music recommendation brand created by Le Bureau Export. Many thanks again to the Jarazum Jazz Festival and Jazz Sous les Pommiers, as well as the French embassies in Singapore, South Korea, Japan and China, with whom we have set up this online event. And thank you very much to you for joining us. Now I'm delighted to give the floor to Mathieu, who is going to introduce the speakers. Thank you very much, Liaison. Hi, everyone. It is my pleasure to introduce you to our first speaker, Eric Zhao lawyer of copyright law in China and vice president of Jay-Z Music, who is going to present jazz market in China. Thank you again, Eric, for accepting our invitation and please take it away. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me here. Uh, I'm Eric Zhao from Jay-Z Music, which is the, maybe the last, last uh, the biggest Jazz label in China. Um, here's my topic about today's presentation. It's called When Jazz Music Meets China. I hope you can see it. Yeah. Uh, I choose a romantic title of my presentation because uh, it's about culture, it's about music. So I I don't want to make it too formal. So it's called When Jazz Music is China. And of course, uh, I'm a lawyer, as you know, uh, and I'm practicing, practicing law in entertainment law, especially in, in music copyright. Maybe some people behind the screen, you are just wondering uh, like, what? Combine two words, China and copyright. Does that China has copyright? Uh, yes, we do. At least I'm here. So the first thing I want to say is, let's free our minds first. Uh, we have a lot of influence from the social media, from public media, from newspaper, even from YouTube movies, uh, even from the president Donald Trump tell us uh, what China is, or they give us something with don't want to know. So the first thing I uh, hope everyone here with me just clear our mind first. Let's start from a uh, clear, uh, just from zero, and let's get to know what China and the jazz and copyright all the things together. So the first thing I would another thing I want to talk about is. The definition of jazz. What is jazz we are talking to here? Um, in my mind, or uh, I think jazz is kind of like a tree. It's a seed from the ragtime from New Orleans. And now it's uh, we have a lot of genre of jazz like beat pop, fusion, uh, a lot of kind of style of jazz. So the Jazz we are talking to here is the tree. I hope you, you can follow me. I, I'm talking about the tree of jazz. We are talking about everything about jazz. And another thing is modern China. Uh, what is modern China? Uh, maybe in some stereotype mind, we, we are thinking uh, the Chinese people, they are like some, uh, I, I don't know, do you know who is Mandarin? Uh, the guy with thing mustache and have a weird head and a ponytail. 
in the comic. Uh, that's not modern China. That is old Asian China. That is called the people from Qing Dynasty, the last emperor dynasty of China. So we're talking about modern China, talking about modern China and the music of today. And so we are going to talk about from a big picture of it. It's called a macroscopic perspective. So we, we will see the whole picture. We don't have too much time to talk about details. Okay, let's start it. Um, the history histor is something we have to say because um, the jazz is is a music music is born for 120 years or 30 years. So uh, in ancient China, we don't have pop music. We don't have jazz, of course. And what is pop music in ancient China? It's called opera. Opera. It's kind of like uh, the opera of Europe, but it's played, performed in outdoor and by some uh, additional instrument. So after that, we are going to talk about how they met in 90, 1920. So that's the time when jazz meets China. Yeah, of course, 1930. That's the first time jazz met in China. They met in Shanghai, the biggest city in, Sh in China. I think a lot of people, they know who is Bach Leiden. He is a leader trumpet for the band of Count Basie and he played together with Billy Holidays. So he's quite a famous musician, but he, do you know, he lived in China for three years in Shanghai in 1934 to 1937. So at that time, 1930, jazz is a pop music in China. And it's quite popular in some clubs, some big clubs, and everyone likes jazz. But what happened after that? As you know, uh, the second time war of the world. And I made a chart of, chart of it. Let's see, the left side is the birth of jazz, maybe from New Orleans, from the rock time. And Let's see, in 1920, we have Louis Armstrong in US, and what about China? We are changing our governments. We, we are uh, in a big social change. And after that, jazz meet China. In US, we have Bing Crosby, Duke Ellington, the big time of swing. And what about China? We have, like I said, we have Bud Clayton, we have Paramount. It's, it is very big and famous club at that time. And it, is, it is still have, it is still running right now. Yeah. And what happened after that? In 1940, B-pop is coming out, but in China, Unfortunately, we are we are on the wall, and after that, uh, Miles Davis, of course, kind of blue blue note a lot of the the pop music, pop a lot big musician. They record some uh, classical jazz records at that time. But what happened in China? We are having a new government, yeah. And you know who it is, and I don't want to talk about too much on it. And let's move forward. Next, in 19, 
1930 to 1970. Some electrical music, they are coming out and Herbie Hancock and what about in China? It's called modern opera. It's not the traditional opera. It's just you have to play some uh, restricted plots, stories. So it's quite boring. And after that, uh, I would just want to make quicker for my presentation. Uh, 2000 years, 2000, that is the, maybe the beginning of internet. Uh, I, I call it cyber era. Uh, internet is coming out and we can download music. We can listen to music from everywhere. So that could be easy, yeah. But one more thing I want to talk about is the 1990. That's a big change timing for jazz music, or we can say Western music. Because you can see from 1930 to 1990, we lost 60 years. We did nothing in these 60 years, but the pop music or jazz music is changing in that time, but China lost these 60 years. So maybe we just re-met jazz in 1990, unfortunately. Yeah, I told this topic before, Yeah, like war, politics, culture, clothes, uh, opera, okay, and what happened in 1990 is called reform and re reopening policy. So we can hear a lot of music from all over the world. And let's back to the party right now. China is the seventh biggest music market in the world according to the statistics of IFPI. So it's a big market. We have a lot of people, they are love to listen to the music and we have a, a great constructor of internet and we have a lot of giant technology company, they running stream platforms. So, but I, something I want to tell you about is the truth. From I know, uh, jazz is still a small part or portion in the market. Um, that's true. And some people, they like pop music. They like uh, some vocal played by singer uh, other than uh, instrument music. But it's like some solo guitars, solo piano, yeah. And some people, um, they just like some pop music about old times or loves. Um, yeah, they didn't know what jazz is. Uh, I, I say these people, these people maybe uh, they born and raised in the last 60 years. So let's see what is happening right now for new generation. The new generation I call here is the born and raised after 2000 years and they uh, they can use smartphone when, uh, when they are very young and they, they listen to uh, hip hop or electro music since they are a kid. So they are different people. I think they are the potential uh, user, or we can say potential, potential listeners to jazz music. Okay. So um, I talk about the statistics value and market. And I just want to say one more. Uh, I just only have two minutes. Um, I come from jazz music, Jay Z music. We are the biggest music manager company and uh, the host of festival in China. We own a lot of clubs, jazz clubs. 
and we I invite a lot of classic world classical classic jazz musician to our festival like Jojo Mayer, Jacob Collier, Bob James, uh, John Schofield, and we have a lot of big names like Marcus Miller, Aaron Carter, Didi Bridgewater, uh, McCoy Tyner. Yeah, we maybe maybe we are we are the second second biggest festival in Asia, and one the last thing i want to talk about is the copyright yeah so i'm here to talk about the distribution uh we are distributed by the local stream platform like tencent that is xiaomi bilibili and weibo what about what's different between them qq music here is qq music is more like uh spotify in china and same as the net east and Bilibili is more like YouTube in China. And Xiaomi is more like a band camp, you know, band camp for independent music. And so that's it. That's my presentation. If you want to get more information about China jazz or something uh, related to copyright, yeah, you can search my name. It's Eric Zhao. You can see Eric Zhao lawyer in Google. Yeah. I hope my presentation will be helpful to you. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much, Eric. That was uh, really interesting. Um, if you uh, guys uh, in the audience want, want to ask any question in the chat room, please feel free. Um, Eric, uh, I have a question about the COVID situation right now in China. And uh, okay. how is it for the jazz scene? Can you tell us a little bit more about it? Uh, you mean in, in jazz, which part? The, the, live, the, the live market, how is it? Uh, uh, live because market, we play jazz in, in uh, indoor club rooms. Yeah, we, 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 uh, and we have big, big festivals. Uh, like I say, Jay-Z Festival, and we have other uh, festivals in different cities, like other big cities like Guangzhou, Beijing. Um, maybe we have five to six. It's okay. like a big, big outdoor festival in China. Yeah. And Every how year. is it? Do you have to wear masks? Do you have to respect social distancing measures right now for live events? Um, you mean with the musician? Or for, for, the, for the audience? Do you hear me? I'm not sure you hear me. Right? Yeah, 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 sorry. Sorry, I have uh, some glitch here. Glitch here. So yeah, I, I was asking. So uh, if if uh, people has to wear masks during the concerts right now in China, how is it? What kind of concert? You mean any live any live events for for the jazz festival, for instance? I mean that they how to buy the ticket. <laughs> no, I was talking Bye. more about you know with the COVID nineteen situation ah yeah yeah we, we, we closed everything yeah yeah okay. unfortunately the, the pandemic we closed everything but you know we reopened at the uh, october yeah, just this month and yeah, and everything back to more normal but we just cannot invite some uh international musician to china to perform to the chinese audience that's that uh I, I hope tomorrow tomorrow or will be better yeah yeah sure and uh do you have any advice for for french companies uh that wants to connect with a uh, chinese professional like you i mean uh how can we connect with you for for instance <laughs> 
Uh, just by email or just okay. uh, Google my name. I have a lot of contacts you, you can reach. And uh, we did some, uh, we have a big band and we just perform at on tip just first of all for three years uh we uh, uh we, we bring some chinese musician jazz musician to france already so i i'm just looking forward to more collaborations yeah okay great so maybe uh we can uh, take a one or two more questions, if you guys uh, have any question to Eric about yeah, the please. jazz market in China. All right. I guess, I guess we can uh, thank you again, Eric. Okay. And uh, now we are gonna uh, now we are gonna welcome our second speaker, uh, Atsuko Yashima. Uh, she's ex artistic director and producer at the Tokyo Jazz Festival, ex producer at NHK Enterprises, and now independent working to promote international artists in Japan. And we are going to have a conversation together with Atsuko about the jazz market in uh, in Japan. Hi, Atsuko. Hello, hello, uh, Matt, uh, Matthew. Hello, everyone. <laughs> hello. <laughs> Thank you for accepting our invitation today. Uh, we're happy to have you with us to share your expertise on the music industry in Japan and uh, especially about the jazz scene, of course. Uh, could you please introduce yourself and your activities in Japan? Yes. Yes. And maybe you, I think you have a, a document to share with us, right? Yes. yes. Good. Uh, so thank you very much for uh, your invitation. I'm Matthew uh, and Bureau Export and the French Embassy. Uh, I'm so delighted to be here. Uh, so first, let me introduce myself. Um, basically, um, it's everything that Matthew just mentioned, um, but just to share my information. Uh, so, um, uh, so, so Please wait a second. Share screen. Okay. Yeah, it's working. I can see your screen. Is it working? Okay. Yeah, perfect. Uh, so I just uh wrote down in english because you may not understand my pronunciation so basically uh, my name is atsuko yashima um i have just become an independent producer i'm preparing to launch my own company uh, which will be called eight islands eight islands is uh, the english version of my last name yashima uh, and as Matthew mentioned, I am hoping to connect Japan and the world through jazz, music, and culture. Uh, but until May, uh, I had served as an event producer at NHK Enterprises, uh, which is an affiliate of uh, Japan's public broadcast, NHK. And I, um, I worked on mainly producing international events. Uh, and um, as uh, Matthew mentioned, um, I uh, was the artistic director and producer uh, for the Tokyo Jazz Festival since its launch on 2002. I worked for 15 years um, in producing the concert. Uh, and then uh, for uh, my collaboration with France, um, I worked with Bureau Export uh, to uh, develop uh, this event called the French Jazz Quarter, uh, where I invited maybe 30 uh, French artists to Japan um, back in 2007. And I did some events uh, such as the Festival of uh, Glamour of France, uh, which might sound strange to the French people. I'm sorry, but it was a good title for the Japanese. Uh, mm -hmm. And I also worked to uh, bring the Christmas market in Strasbourg to Tokyo, which was a big hit for the Japanese audience. And I also curated some uh, local jazz festivals in Japan. And currently, uh, since 10 years ago, when the um, there was a big earthquake and tsunami in Japan, I have been working uh, for a disaster relief project called Music for Tomorrow. 
Yes, and that's what I've been doing. Wow, impressive. Mm. Thank you, Atsuko. So, first of all, uh, could you describe for us the relationship between Japan and culture, and of course, especially with, with music? Yes, okay. Um, maybe I should keep this on. Um, yeah, I, I think you can keep it up. And, yes, okay. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, so, this is uh, my understanding of the general context of jazz in Japan. So I'm going to speak um, especially on jazz because I, I believe this is a forum regarding jazz. Uh, so um, I think um, jazz in Japan. So um, my understanding is that um, before the World War II uh, and probably uh, sometime after the World War II, so jazz was our icon for the Western culture and sophistication because um, Japan was had always been closed um, from the foreign countries until approximately 200 years ago. Uh, and after we opened up, uh, we felt the need to catch up with the, with the Western countries. By Western, I'm saying Europe and America uh, mainly, um, but um, uh, so jazz and probably classical music has been the icon for such a sophist sophistication that we have to kind of work to live up to. And since then, um, there has been many, many cultural activities regarding jazz, like um, there are lots of books about jazz, uh, jazz bands coming to Japan, but it was all a longing for the Western culture. So it was a bit far away for us. But um, after the Second World War, um, Japan had uh, recovered from the uh, devastation and we worked to develop our economy and culture. Still, we are doing so, but um, so we have been still longing for the, uh, the authentic Western culture, but at the same time, we got used to kind of like importing the Western culture, including jazz and improvising the culture into our own style. So I think that's kind of like that very easy um, expression of the jazz situation in Japan. Great, great. And in general, uh, if we are talking about jazz music, where do Japanese mm -hmm. people go to listen to music, actually? And uh, yes. how, how is jazz seen by Japanese people? I think you were mentioning to me before about elevator mm -hmm. music. Mm -hmm. Maybe you want to mm -hmm. share that with us. Yes, yes. Uh, so, um, so we are talking about listening to jazz, uh, yeah. but there's also hearing jazz. So um, as Matthew just said, we can hear jazz music in various places. And I learned that you would call this uh, type of music, uh, music to escalier, is that music correct? Music d'ascenseur, yes, music? ascenseur. <laughs> the ascenseur, so, so, not escalier, ascenseur, okay. Exactly. Uh, bad French, uh, yes, yes. So mm. um, uh, we don't call it um, uh, elevator music in Japan, but you can hear jazz music in various places without noticing like in Japanese restaurant. This is a photo of a soba restaurant that I went last week. It was full uh, of jazz music. We don't see, actually, yeah. we don't see your, your screen. Maybe you can uh, okay. click on share screen again. Okay. Yeah, perfect. Uh, it, uh, it works. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Hello. Uh, I'm just going back. You have to, to click again. Yes. Is it working? No. Mm, it was working. And now. Yes. It has disappeared. Okay, uh, let me go back to the start. Uh, is it working now? Yes, perfect. Okay, okay. So this is the photo of the soba restaurant I went last weekend which is full of jazz music, but I'm eating soba. And in That's cafe great. and supermarkets and hairdresser, shopping arcade, uh, furniture stores, car showrooms. So these are kind of like um, endeavors to, to, to show the, um, the customers that, you know, how sophisticated these shops are. That, that's my understanding. And how, you know, the, the jazz music is connected to the lifestyle. So this is kind of like an ambient music. Um, and then um, if we talk about listening to jazz, like you know, very um, 
focused on listening to jazz. Of course, there are jazz clubs. There's Kisa, which is a traditional ja Japanese cafe culture, on um, concert halls, and lots and lots of CD and vinyl shops. And also, um, maybe it's a characteristic in Japan that concerts are held in very, maybe strange places, such as like temples and shrines, like even in public spa, like uh, furniture showroom, breweries. Um, it's like um, people love entertainment in these um, like lifestyle places. Great, great. So, so many places where you can listen to jazz music in Japan. And uh, we know that Japan is still one of the biggest markets uh, for mm -hmm. recorded music in the world, uh, especially because of CD sales, of course. But streaming is getting, is getting bigger, bigger and bigger every year. Um, could you tell us more about the, the, the recorded market and uh, how jazz uh, is in this recorded market? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so um, when you say like, uh, so I just want to tell you that the, um, there is a CD and the vinyl uh, yeah. and the um, streaming, they all really exist in Japan. And I think it should be impressive for uh, a lot of people from overseas that the, um, uh the cd shops and the vinyl shops still exists uh, am i sharing the screen now no you're not okay um okay. am i now <laughs> yes yes okay sorry uh, so i just wanted to uh, tell you that um cd vinyls and streamings they really do exist, all three of them, but I think they're playing different roles, maybe targeted to a different kind of audience. And I brought a photo of this, my favorite CD shop place called Jazz Tokyo by the Disc Union. Uh, it has the largest CD selling areas and probably the, um, the most CDs um, on, on sale in Asia. And it's pr pretty much packed with people. So people still visit these kind of places to get CDs. And of course, there are lots of vinyl shops for vinyl collectors. And the interesting thing uh, that is happening now is that the um, younger generations are finding jazz on like playlists from streaming. Like there is a very, very appealing uh, Spotify playing list called New Music Wednesday. And it kind of like, it's a compilation of these new releases beyond genres. So a lot of um, new artists and upcoming artists are uh, striving to get their songs included um, in this playlist. So maybe the concept of music genre is kind of changing, but jazz is still existing uh, in the terms of recording in Japan. Great. And in terms of uh, uh, PR companies and promotion, mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit more about, uh, is there any companies dedicated to jazz? Is there any mm -hmm. PR companies actually in Japan? Yes, um, as far as I know, I have not met a PR company who's really, really just focused on jazz. Um, there are like music PR companies. Um, there are lots of PR companies, but as you know, as we all know, in promoting jazz, you really have to understand the context of jazz, history of jazz, and the jazz scenes. So it's really been difficult um, promoting jazz. Um, but um, I, I, I discovered one thing, so I wrote it down in this presentation sheet. But um, for from my experience, I think there's really no royal road to promoting jazz. Uh, but you can really pave your uh, road uh, through personal connection. So for me, I would um, suggest that if you have money to pay for a PR company to promote jazz, I would rather um, suggest you to make, uh, to use the money for buying drinks for friends or fostering <laughs> <laughs> dedicated fans. Um, That's pretty good advice. Yeah. Yes, yes. Um, yes, but um, if I, can I just go on with the promotion part, actually? 
Of course. Yes, yeah, sure. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so, but um, but at the same time, um, while you are buying uh, your uh, potential friend drinks, it's also very important to um, at least work on the basics. So I have just listed these basic uh, media, uh, which are really, wow. really uh, trustworthy uh, jazz media for me. Uh, these are the kind of the uh, channels that I um, I really trust and I really worked on myself, um, not with the, uh, not via the PR company mainly. Uh, so names of a very, very jazz dedicated magazines. Uh, there are lots of dedicated journalists in newspaper who are who really loves jazz, uh, and there's uh, also a press agency uh, whose writers love jazz. Uh, lots of great website and digital media, uh, and important market would be the English speaking community in Japan. Uh, lots of um, audience are from overseas when you come to like live concerts in Japan, so you should really. Um, work on connecting with these English speaking medias. Um, and also there are some radio programs, uh, not so many. Uh, TV is almost disappeared, uh, but personally I have started um, presenting um, a program at this JF and AOR Jazz and Vocal Night since this month. Uh, so uh, I know that myself that there is existing radio programs and uh, streaming service is on the way from France, uh, which is called Quest TV. So uh, these are the basic medias that um, uh, maybe you can look into before buying drinks. <laughs> Thank you, Atsuko. I guess we have like just 30 seconds left and uh, people are asking if you can enlarge your uh, PowerPoint presentation because we cannot read uh, uh, okay. if you can. Yeah, do it. Yes. Oh, great, amazing. Okay. I think we we we're gonna we're gonna just uh, finish with a couple of questions about what you were saying about getting in touch with Japanese people. So mm -hmm. you you were telling me that Facebook is is quite a thing to to get in touch with jazz professional. Right? Yes, I. Uh, as far as I know, I think it really connects a bit with the generation kind of issue, but. A uh, lot of jazz people use uh, Facebook. Okay, and yes. could you could you share just uh, uh, an experience working with with French people that that you had uh, before? Yes, yes. Uh, so <laughs> just a ending comment, but I really want to thank all the French artists and the French partners for you know accepting diversity and teaching us the importance of diversity. On um, Japan and France has been a long friend. And it's really impressive how you adopted and accepted jazz in your culture. And I really admire and respect um, this culture. For instance, I had the, um, I had the pleasure to invite Tigran Hamashian for, the, for his first time in Japan, I think, uh, maybe 10 years ago. But at first, I did not know why, um, you know, he was not a French person at that point, I think he was uh, doing his activities in France, but he's um, uh, Armenian. So, so, but, but for, it's a part of the French culture because he's recording in France. Same as Abraham Mal, who is from Lebanon, I think. And yes. I was able to discover so many interesting music from the Caribbean, from the Reunion Islands. So it's all been a very much pleasure working on discovering diversity um, through working with French partners. Great. We have a question uh, from Sami Chibo, a French saxophonist. Um, he's asking, but if he's, if there is no PR dedicated to Japan, to jazz in Japan, uh, mm -hmm. how do you support a release of a foreign CD in Japan? Uh, it has, he is ask, he's asking if he has to contact by himself mm -hmm. the jazz media. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What, what do you suggest? Well, I suggest that first, um, uh, Sami, um, I think uh, it's the best to make a good press release in Japanese, um, maybe like in one sheet paper, um, just um, introducing yourself and your music and some links. And that's the starting point. 
And then I suggest that you go through your label or your friends in the music business to find someone who could pass the news on. But Great. but That's... but but in passing the news on, it's really really important to have like a good one sheet paper. A simple one is the best. Like a one pager with all the info. What what kind of information do you need, for instance? I think maybe um bio, uh, your discography, photo, links to your music, and um, yeah, maybe and just a very nice note of greeting, kind of. Okay, and social media, is it mm -hmm. something that you will consider uh, in the one pager promo page? Yeah, yes. Yes, I think it's good to have like a uh, Twitter, uh, Instagram, um, a Facebook account. Um, but if you share your information on all these SNS, it would be the best to kind of like put everything in compact information and post it, you know, so that people will have, will really look at it and really glance it and really click to your link. Yeah, and you were telling me also, uh, about good manners on uh, SNS. <laughs> Can you share that with everybody? Because I think it's very useful. Yes, it's, but this is completely my personal point of view, and I have, have been having so many it. arguments with my colleagues. But um, <laughs> uh, for like a producer like me, my job is to kind of curate various artists and music. So I have the happiness to discover and you know being pitched so many music, but. Um, when I feel like I'm being kind of like bombarded by so many information, I get confused and I can't really concentrate on music. So um, please, um, um, I would love to discover uh, my music, but please, I, I my, my suggestion is that for someone like me, it's not a very good idea to kind of just uh, uh, put me, uh, how do I say that? kind of like link me as like a friend. Like if you kind of like send out your um, names with like 300 tagged names of like producers <laughs> or like artistic directors, yeah. it all goes on their feed or it all goes to them, but they'll get confused, like I'll get confused. And that's one style that I, I personally have very difficult time with. But if you could just drop me one email asking me, Hey Atsuko, can I tag you? You know, then I would say yes or maybe no, but you know, but basically I would know you. So, so I would really appreciate those kind of um, yeah. better to etiquette. send an email before. Yeah, yeah, for mm -hmm. for someone like me. Okay. P please don't take me as a difficult person, but <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> Thank you so much, Atsuko, for all these useful elements. And uh, now I think we can. Uh, uh, switch to our last and our third speaker, Chung Hun Lee. He's a director of Seoul Music Week and Ulsan Jazz Festival, who is going to tell us more about the jazz market in South Korea. Chung Hun, please take it away and thank you again. First of all, uh, thank you for inviting uh, this session to uh, Bureau Export and Lizong, Benjamin, and Mathieu. Um, it, today is uh, my lovely and small jazz festival, Wusan Jazz Festival, it's the first day. Uh, now uh, downstairs, they play the first band, yeah. Uh, I gave the, my presentation, but uh, I think the uh, more prefer to my mention, I think, yeah. Uh, I would like to say, uh, Korean jazz music market uh, overview or introduction. Yeah, of course you we can find by uh, by Google very easy about the Korean jazz the club, Korean jazz the market and festival. The publisher and label is also mm. very funny. Uh, news is uh, uh, at this week. You know the BTS. The Big Hit Entertainment is uh, the, the agency of the uh, BTS. Big Hit Entertainment, they involved in stock market 
in Korea finally. The, this is the big news and big hit entertainment. Anyway, uh, we Korean jazz musicians, they are so lucky. Of course, the, not, all, not, all, um, not only the jazz musician, but also Korean traditional musician or indie rock and electro hip hop musician is also. Uh, we Korean uh, Minister of Culture, they have uh, three major the branch. The first is uh, Art Council Korea, we call it ARCO. The second is uh, Korea uh, Creative Content Agency, we call it COCA. Uh, the last is uh, COMS, we call it COMS, Korea Art Management Service. These three branch, they used to support very well to the artist. Recently, uh, um, they supported the uh, Korean jazz musician for the, the international the venue and festival and club. Yeah, I think that this three branch is a is a really really good job. I think. Yeah. Um, I think the now is a uh, except the Korean K-pop or BTS. Uh, our Korean music scene has a, uh, this is a hot trend or hot passion. Uh, probably you know or you don't know. Uh, this musician is a, not jazz musician, but uh, they, uh, they got a big success of the world music scene or uh, experimental or jazz scene is also. It's, uh, they are Jambinai and Sing Sing, Akdang uh, Bang Chil. You can, you can find easy by Google, uh, they are big hit. And also the Korean jazz musicians, uh, some, some of the Korean jazz musicians, they, uh, the, they published the, their album, the very famous the record label like ECM and ACT. Uh, probably almost the uh, French jazz musician or jazz people, uh, you know, the Yun Sun Na, yeah. Um, I would like to say the very short, uh, history of Korean jazz scene. After the Korean War, 1953, the, I would like to say the, they are the first generation, uh, they started uh, their play in US military camp and the uh, live show club like a Mulang Luz. Yeah, the, they are our Korean, the first generation. The second generation is a, uh, after the 1999, uh, they studied in the foreign country, for example, the, the US, Berkeley, and New York, and the, the Paris, and the Netherlands, Groningen. Their age is the, from the 40s to the 50s. Very luckily, they become the, the regular, the professor in university and college. The third generation is uh, after the 2010. Uh, I think the, the third generation is half and half. The meaning is that 50% the jazz, young jazz musician they started in foreign countries, 50% Korean jazz musician they started in Korean university and college. Uh, we Korea have a, um, about uh, the 50 university and college have a, uh, the music department. Of course, the, the uh, this music department, they teaching the, the 50 percent more. They teaching the jazz, and the 50 percent is the musical and the, the Korean pop and the R&B like this. But uh, I think that the, this third generation is, uh, I guess, uh, they are uh, not too happy because uh, honestly. It's very difficult to become a, the, the professor. Of course, they teaching as a part-time instructor in college and university, and also they just earn the money in the, from the, the live club and the small concert. Of course, we Korea have a 10 around jazz festival. You know, the Jarasam International Jazz Festival is the yeah, most biggest jazz festival in Asia, and you know, so many audience. Uh, of course, some jazz festivals provide the good performance fee, but the uh, mm, jazz festival at the local city is a, or a small festival is a, not too good, uh, the performance fee anyway. 
I uh, recommend the, some Korean um, the jazz band. The first of all, the Yun Sun Na, the, probably the many people already know. And the second is NEQ, its meaning is a Near East Quartet. Their album published by uh, ECM several years ago. And also this year, the, you know, the, all, we all jazz people know the jazz ahead in the Bremen is Germany. This year, the April, the Sujin Se, she is the, the female uh, jazz drummer. Sujin Se trio selected the showcase by the jazz ahead, but this year, the, the, the canceled for next year. Yeah, these three uh, Korean jazz musician old band, they are mm, yeah, more famous in the foreign countries. Uh, in Korean jazz market, is a, honestly, Mm, very small people uh, the buying a CD and vinyl. Of course, very the, uh, interesting is uh, now in the Korean uh, jazz field, the vinyl, vinyl market is increased every year. Of course, the uh, Japanese music market is more bigger and bigger. And many Japanese people, they uh, used to do the buying a CD and vinyl. But uh, uh, many Korean young people, they enjoy the, the, the music not only jazz, but also another music jam. They just uh, the using the, the the streaming service. And of course, it's the now is YouTube is uh, the second second grade. The first is Melon and Genie is a Korean the streaming service company. Yeah, but I'm very analog man and uh, old school. I I didn't using uh, this the Melon and Genie. Of course, I using I used to using the YouTube, yeah. And the uh, next thing is uh, if the uh, ah, okay Korean the jazz festival and Korean music market, I I can say uh, the first of all is Jarasam International Jazz Festival and Seoul Jazz Festival is the second largest uh, jazz festival. Of course, the, this festival is a uh, more commercial. The music festival, not only jazz, but also another uh, pop and Euro pop and uh, um, electro and R and B's also. And my jazz festival, Ulsan Jazz Festival, and uh, this year the 21 anniversary is the most oldest and the most small jazz festival. <laughs> of course, with my jazz festival, uh, we are open to uh, uh, not. Not only stand out, but also the experimental and avant-garde jazz, yeah, or contemporary music is okay. And Seoul Forest Jazz Festival. Anyway, totally, uh, uh, including the, the the local cities, the Korean Jazz Festival is ten around yeah members. And the Korean the TV show is a. Yeah, this TV program is a very, very useful for the jazz musician. EVS is a national broadcasting, the education broadcasting station. Bongam is the most representative the TV program for the jazz musician. Yeah. And nowadays, they, do, they are wide open to jazz and uh, uh, independent musician to the singer-songwriter. Yeah. But the main is jazz, EBS Kongam. The radio is uh, KBS, a Korean broadcasting station, is national, and the jazz note, and CBS FM. CBS is a Christian the, uh, broadcasting uh, station. Very famous, the, the music the ra radio the station in Korea, CBS. All the jazz, this is the only one uh, uh, daily jazz program two hours a day. A magazine is a two magazine, the Jazz People and the MM Jazz. Yeah, I was a columnist at the MM Jazz during the five years. Yeah, two jazz magazine is a main. Uh, and the, the last I would like to say to French jazz people, jazz musician or promoter and manager, of course, you if you want to play in Korea, of course, you can uh, contact to the French embassy or 
uh, Frances Institute in uh, Seoul, Korea, and me and Jarasun Jazz Festival. The to me is more referred to the Facebook Messenger, not to me email. Email is uh, not easy to, uh, for example, to the um, the musician or manager when they send to the email. The, their the video link and the, the audio link, not easy. The Facebook Messenger is more easy to uh, to approach to their music, yeah. Mm. And also, uh, my Seoul Music Week is a showcase international showcase festival. Thirty percent is jazz, thirty percent is uh, the world music. 30% is indie music, 10% is the contemporary or experimental and avant-garde. You can apply to my showcase festival, Seoul Music Week. The, every year, uh, beginning of the November, we will open application for next year. Of course, the, we can uh, accept uh, for my Ulsan Jazz Festival, and you can send to the um, detail to uh, Seoul Music Week website. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, Jung Hoon. It was uh, really interesting. And uh, thank you for letting us know more about the jazz market in South Korea. And so now I don't see you anymore. Uh, I don't know why. Um, yeah. Ah, I think mm, you're back. Sorry. Yeah, no yeah. worries. <laughs> and I think we have a question for you uh, from a Cambodian uh, label. Um, clap your hands. They're asking, um, is it jazz? Uh, like, they're, they're asking basically if jazz is touching all generations in mm -hmm. Korea, or is it only for uh, young people, older people? Mm -hmm. What is your feeling? About this, yeah, and the very funny thing is, Atsuko she said in Japan is a hair salon and supermarket and restaurant, many many places uh, there the the turn on the jazz music. Korea is very similar. The our older generation, I uh, my expression is older generation is more of the fifty. Yeah, they they just enjoy the standard jazz. Yeah, but the young mm -hmm. generation they used to enjoy the. the uh, standard jazz and the more contemporary or fusion mm -hmm. jazz mixed the rock or Korean traditional music or electro also. also. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's great because we have a, a question uh, from Gael Rassert. I hope uh, I pronounce it well. Um, and asking about if there uh, are there any predominant jazz styles for jazz festivals in Korea? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the, I would like to say the Jarasum Jazz Festival. They uh, their program is very various. Mm -hmm. uh, the, another big fe jazz festival, Seoul Jazz Festival. Uh, they they are the com more commercial, and they need a big name, and also they are more. Um, they need a more popular jazz or smooth jazz, or uh, yeah, but. Uh, uh, Basically, Korean jazz audience, the they their easy is the, the I think the from the, the late twenty to uh, late thirty. Eighty percent is woman. Yeah, this okay. is a very important important tip. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> Not too dominant jazz jazz style because uh, so many Korean young jazz musician their new album. The expressed the contemporary or sometimes experimental, but uh, normally Korean people like a uh, very melodic jazz. Yeah, not to mm -hmm. uh, they don't they don't want to the experimental and avant garde. Yeah, the, we call the smooth jazz or um, pop jazz. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Thank you very much, Chung Hoon. I think we have like. One minute left. Uh, if you guys have any questions for Chung Hoon, all right. I don't see any other questions, so uh, thank you again, Chung Hoon.
Thank you. Uh, it was really interesting. Thank you, Atsuko. Thank you, Eric, uh, for your great presentations. I hope uh, it helps some of us to better understand the jazz markets in China, Japan, and South Korea, and to create more collaboration between France and Asia. Uh, I would like to thank, uh, of course, Benjamin, Benjamin Delemester for his help today, François Claire, Margot de Merceman, Olivier Delpoux, Jean-Romain Micol, Elisa joliveau brenet Tania Kali, and Jingshu Jiao for their help for this session. And uh, Lison, I leave you the final word. Yeah, thank you very much to all of you and of course to Mathieu for moderating this session. Uh, for those of you who have registered for the speed meeting session, see you in a moment. And for the rest of you, please join us tomorrow for a panel discussion called How to e-connect with Asia at the same time, 9.30 a.m. Central European Summer Time. Bye-bye. Thank you.